Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Follow me on Twitch to watch me play some Elden Ring, and like and subscribe to become a legend next time you play. Maybe. We've built quite a few Elden Ring characters at this point. General Radon, King Godfrey, the first Elden Lord, and Melania, Goddess of Rot. It's a bit hard to keep things interesting after that. Melania is a literal god. But what is a god to a non-believer? I'm solo, I'm riding solo. Hey y'all, not plugging myself this time, I'm gonna plug the legend behind Let Me Solo Her. You can go watch them actually beat Melania a bunch, something I don't like to do. Link to their channel in the description. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need to avoid getting hit. Next, we need to deal some damage, specifically a flurry of fast attacks with a few big bursts when the bleed or frostbite pops. Finally, we'll get some spells, not to use them, they're just gonna kinda sit in the inventory. For stats, we're gonna be using the standard point by from the player's handbook. Rule for stats if you want, just keep your multi-classing minimums in mind. Dexterity, intelligence, and wisdom all up at 15. You need to dodge, read the dodge, and be big enough brained to take off all your pants and jacket. Strength, constitution, and charisma can drop down to 8. Your weapons are light enough, you don't speak, and you don't need vigor if you just never get hit. Let me solo her is a human, though he cosplays as a jar. Jaraboo is not a playable race. Take dual wielder for your feet of choice, adding one to your AC when you're holding a weapon in each hand. You can dual wield weapons that don't have the light property as long as they don't have the heavy property. That means you can use two long swords for katanas, though we're actually going to start with short swords for the finesse. Bump your dexterity and wisdom with your two free points, take insight for your skill of choice to read Melania's moves, and build your own background for survival and intimidation, I guess? Let me sure does survive, and there's something terrifying about a pothead with no pants. We'll kick things off as a fighter, letting us grab two skills from the fighter list like acrobatics and perception to land sweet rolls and learn those tells. This is also where you get a fighting style, like two weapon fighting to add your ability modifier to the damage of your offhand weapon attack, so each hit is going to have a little more stank on it. You also get second wind, letting you heal 1d10 plus your fighter level as a bonus action once per short rest. I guess you can bring flasks if you think you're ever going to miss time one roll, but that doesn't sound like you. Second level fighters get action surge, letting you make two actions in one turn once per short rest. That's up to three attacks in a single round with your bonus action offhand weapon attack. Power stancing is the coolest way to play. Third level fighters can choose a martial archetype like Battlemaster for four superiority die. Those are d8s you can use for three maneuvers, and the maneuvers don't really matter. We just need the extra damage. So, tripping attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature hit. Failing that, they're knocked prone. Pushing attack forces a strength saving throw on a creature hit, pushing them 15 feet back if they fail. And goading attack forces a wisdom saving throw on a creature. Failing that, they have disadvantage on attacks against creatures that aren't you. Each of those superiority die add to the damage, and you decide to use them after you've hit. So, wait until a critical hit, and that d8 turns into 2d8. That's a big old bleed proc. They recover on short rest, so make sure that you're spending them. Of course, the real way to beat a goddess is with the power of a god, so use Student of War to get proficiency with calligraphers' supplies. Four level fighters get an ability score improvement or feat will grab the Gift of the Chromatic Dragon. That lets you add a d4 of acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage to a weapon's attack rolls, and you can give yourself resistance to acid, cold, fire, lightning, or poison damage an amount of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus. That'll give you a nice little cold uchi and help you avoid the poison from the rot flower. Fifth level fighters get an extra attack, letting you make two attacks with your action, or up to four with an action surge, even five after you add a bonus action offhand weapon attack. That's a lot of opportunities to get that bleed procking. Let's bounce over to Monk really quick for unarmored defense, making your AC 10 plus your dexterity and wisdom modifier when you're not wearing armor. You might think armor is a good idea for Melania, but why would you wear armor if you don't plan on getting hit? You also get martial arts letting you make unarmed attacks using your bonus action, but you're two weapon fighting, so you don't really need that. Second level monks get key points they can use to do cool solo stuff like step of the wind to dash or disengage as a bonus action with double jump distance if you want to just charge in. Patient defense lets you dodge as a bonus action so you can always be ready to roll when you need to. Flurry of blows lets you make two unarmed attacks as a bonus action which might actually be good but I think the key points should be used on patient defense. You don't really need step of the wind since your movement speed will just get boosted by unarmored movement provided you're not wearing armor of course it's right there in the name. You also get dedicated weapon letting you pick a weapon you're proficient with to become a monk weapon so that it now uses your dexterity. It just can't be heavy or two-handed. Now you can dual wield the long swords with your dexterity much better. Back over to fighters, 6th level fighters get an ability score improvement, bump up your dexterity for better AC, damage, and accuracy all at the same time. You'll need to dodge and hit. It is really the only things you need to do. 7th level battle masters get to know their enemy with a minute of study or a couple thousand fights against them. You learn two pieces of information, their AC, HP, strength, dexterity, constitution, fighter level, or total levels. It's the Fextra Life ability. For this level's maneuvers, RIP OST lets you make an opportunity attack against a creature that misses you with an attack. So use patient defense and 
and your absurd AC to find a way in for some big damage. Oh, big damage because you had your superiority die to the damage. Lunging attack lets you add 5 feet to the range of a weapon attack, adding another superiority die to the damage as well. You also get another superiority die to use for another bleed proc when you critically hit. 8th level fighters get another ability score improvement, cap off that dexterity for the best attacks you can possibly make. At least hit the soft cap for your damage stats, you know? 9th level fighters get indomitable, letting you re-roll one failed saving throw per long rest. You gotta get out of the way of the Scarlet Aeonia. That's gotta be a con save, which despite dumping con, you're not actually bad with since you have proficiency from fighter. 10th level battle masters get improved combat superiority, bumping your D8 superiority die to D10s. You don't actually get another superiority die, you get two more maneuvers, and I don't know, I guess precision attack to add the superiority die to your attack roll instead of the damage and maybe evasive maneuver. We just need the die for big damage. 11th level fighters get another extra attack for three attacks with reaction, six with an action surge, and seven with a bonus action offhand weapon attack. Now that's what I call a let me solo her combo. 12th level fighters get another ability score improvement work on the wisdom for more ac to never get hit 13th level fighters get another use of indomitable which you could use on death saving throws though it's not like you're ever gonna need that the other tarnished to summon you might need that 14th level fighters get another ability score improvement cap off your 21 base ac while you're dual wielding if only we could push that higher first level wizards can push that even higher with spells like shield adding five to your ac as a reaction pushing you up to 26. even with a plus 11 from a capped off modifier that's gonna miss more than half the time that's kind of all we need let me is a simple man jump and long strider wouldn't be that bad if you want them if you want to make a fire attack with rivers of blood you could grab green flame blade that'll let you make a weapon attack that deals an extra 3d8 plus 5 fire damage but since it uses your whole action it's kind of a big risk let me mostly just does the regular attacks second level wizard is what we came here for for the blade singer subclass and blade songs that lets you add your intelligence modifier to your ac concentration saving throws and you get an extra 10 feet of movement speed an amount of times per long rest equal to your proficiency bonus that's 23 base ac while dual wielding or 28 with a shield spell it is absurdly high you'll definitely hit more than you're getting it, which is really the whole strategy. Melania isn't even hard, just hit her more than she hits you, duh. Third level wizards can learn second level spells, we only need one. Magic weapon, which adds one to a weapon's attack and damage rolls for up to an hour depending on your concentration, and makes it magical in terms of overcoming resistances. Since you don't really have other things to use your concentration, just get some magic damage on your cold Uchi, and miss less often. Melania is also a bit slippery. Our capstone is the fourth level of wizard for one last ability score improvement, bump your intelligence as high as you can for one more ac while you have your blade songs active 24 base 29 with the shield spell pretty bonkers now that we've hit level 20 let's figure out how viable this build is first you are really hard to hit requiring a 13 or higher even if melania has the standard plus 11 attack modifier you can also force that to be an 18 with the shield spell so it's awesome you're also dealing nice and consistent damage with three attacks chromatic dragon bumps five superiority die and magic weapon giving you a ton of fantastic options to bring the pain finally you're pretty fast unarmor move Movement pairing with Long Strider and a Blade Song will let you make sure that you can get in and solo Melania while the summoner just emotes in the back. That's the bard giving you inspiration, obviously. For weaknesses, you might have less than 100 HP, so Power Word Kill won't care how effective you are at rolling. You're also not much for conversation, with low charisma making it hard to explain your mission to people. I guess that's why you choose the name. Finally, you left quite a few spells on the table you could use, but honestly, just pick some up at home. Doesn't mean you have to use them. So the answer to beating a god is just rolling up a glass cannon with better than a French bakery. Don't get hit. Hit them. Win. Just watch out for a boss you can't dodge, or you could find yourself kneeling with some bloody tears. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, go watch Let Me Solo Her, Solo Her, on YouTube. Channel link is in the description. I also make Elden Ring stuff that's a little less impressive, but I think it's pretty fun, so maybe follow me on Twitch to watch it.